I think we're looking at the best of Kevin Herter to come in the future. He's a two-way player, 6'7", a guy that's long, can defend on the perimeter, and is a knockdown shooter. This guy is poised to have a breakout season. He's not really missed the first foul shot. And he went over and spoke to him. So yeah. this might actually have ended up working better in their favor. The deficit is two. Fox is going to bring it across the midcourt line. Got a good screen from Sabonis from the elbow. Tipped up. Back out the box. Float game. Short. Loose again. Hurt. Just has to get it in bounds. And there it is. Ball game. The Kings win it. Their 19th win of the season. Cool. Kevin Herter. When Kevin first got into sports, he was, I think, four years old, and we would go to the YMCA on Saturday mornings, um, and he would play with kids who were five and older. But he would watch his older brother, and he always wanted to be doing what his older brother was doing. And they often were just full of energy, and they learned a lot from their father who played basketball in high school and college himself. So very early they had a ball in their hands, and whatever Thomas was doing, Kevin always wanted to do you know, the same or, and the competitive side of him, he would often try to do it better. We played one-on-one -on -one a bunch. It usually ended um, either in a fist fight or close to a fist fight. So uh, mom and dad sort of outlawed that at some point. But we honestly, we would play a lot of just like shooting games, just, you know, I can make more than you in this spot or this spot or whatever. I always remember the boys when they were literally toddlers. We had a living room that became a playroom with a little Tykes basketball hoop. But when they weren't playing basketball, they had this car collection because we had a rug that, had, that looked like a city. And they would play with their matchbox cars. And his were always organized perfectly. So he always had kind of like a, a focus to him even at a young age, I think. Four, three, two, one. I started working out Kev when he was in eighth grade. Uh, part of my local training was I work with high schools in our area and his high school, Shenandoah, um, had hired me years before to do their summer off-season training. First impression of Kevin as an eighth grader, good shooter understood the game, was high IQ, and then each year, right, he just kept getting better and better to the point where we are like, man, this kid's got a chance to be really special. So yeah, this is like the front entrance. If you're coming to a game, you'd walk in here. But yeah, this was uh, the high school gym. Won a lot of games in this gym. It was great. I mean, my junior and senior year, we used to obviously get a lot of students would come out. Uh, it was fun. We had a great environment. Again, it's a big school, so we had a lot of parents, a lot of support from the community, which was always great. Uh, Tuesday, Friday nights, those are always the game nights. So, again, won a lot of games in this gym. Kevin's the most talented basketball player that I, I ever coached, which sounds like, well, no kidding. Kevin's very cerebral with basketball. He understands the game. He is an extraordinarily uh, team first player. He easily could have averaged 35, 40 points uh, playing for me his senior year. Instead, he's, he just got everybody involved. He put the team first. His attitude was always great. I always say this, the more accolades and awards and accomplishments that, that he achieved his senior year, the easier he became the coach. Kevin was always a pleasure to coach, but as he's 
these accolades came, it was actually more enjoyable. It's almost like he, he didn't even want the, the those. He just wanted the team to have success, and that that was it. This is kind of like our our high school wall. So this is the jersey frame that we won. We won a we won a state championship in that. My brother's senior year, my junior year. So this is that jersey with that team. You see, Dad. That's his. We always like to make fun of him for the stash he's rocking in this picture. You know, this was one of the papers. This was at this point like sold out crowd in our gym was like a big deal. Still got the rings. So this is baseball. So this is 2016. Gotta show our high school rings. Come on now. So this stays here so I don't lose them. And this one was basketball. So we got both of these. But they got your name on them. So let me get one of these for the Kings out. They, you know, Purple would look a little better than green at this point in my life. So you got a lot of goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> when he was in high school, we didn't have high major D1 in you know the back of our minds, and I know he didn't. It was just we want to be as good as we can for our high school season, and we knew that we had confidence that he would go in and, and do well at Maryland. But again, the NBA and the next step was never on our minds, or I'm sure it wasn't on his mind. And then sort of after his freshman year, and he had a, you know, a good year, I forget what he averaged, but that was the year where we kind of you know, took a step back that, that spring and summer and kind of looked at each other and said, he might not be there all four years. Where is Mello? He's on the right wing. Cowan drops it down along the block to Devontae Dodd. Whips the pass right side. Herner wide open for three. And yeah, we on the ball. Work, yeah, to run it up. Work, yeah. I think in college, seeing him play there and thrive, I was like, oh, he's actually like pretty good at this. I never thought growing up that he would be where he is now. Like, I just thought that he was like a good basketball player, like never could play in the NBA. With the 19th pick in the 2018 NBA draft, the Atlanta Hawks select Kevin Herter from the University of Maryland. It truly was a surreal moment. I think we always knew that he had the ability to play at the highest level because parents have confidence in their children. But then to see that there were teams and coaches and, and team owners that also had the same confidence in Kevin, it was such a proud, proud moment. There's not a day that goes by that I don't get one to two texts um, every single day, even in the off season, you know, asking about Kevin, how he's doing. So we were here, I actually got the phone call from his agent, and as soon as I saw the number come up, uh, I just said, oh my God, I think he got traded. We had goals going in about what we wanted to accomplish, uh, certainly adding shooting, size, versatility, defense, depth. You know, Kevin, starting the playoffs, can score a variety of ways, play make, shoot, defend, rebound, give us a lot of those things that we were looking for. 24 points, Hawks lead by two. At first, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit upset about Kev moving away from Atlanta, but when he made the move, it was just great to see how much love he was getting there and to see the way that he fit in so fast and filled the role that he filled was awesome. We started looking around and I remember even texting like, you guys are going to be good this year. Like you have a really good, strong core of young guys that plays the right way and plays unselfishly. And when he went out and met all those guys for the first time, he sort of was able to, you know, confirm some of the beliefs we had. Dame got knocked off balance, no whistle. Herder over to Lyles, filling the lane for the layup. And just said, you know, these guys are all really good guys. They're all in this for the right reasons. They're all you know, professionals in, in more ways than one. We were very optimistic going into the season, just excited for him to be in a new situation basketball-wise and to be around you know, some of the great teammates that he has in Sacramento. So good, first midi day with Sac. Let's get it, some new digs, new colors. 
rocking the purple black. I was flying across the country to a new place, a place I'd never lived before, only visited a handful of times. Similarly, I didn't really know what to expect. And our team is great, the fans are great, the city's great. And so everything that could go well has gone well. People really, I think, underestimated and slept on his ability to put it on the deck and get to the basket, put it on the deck off the catch or the dribble, and not just a catch and shoot, spot up in the corner type of guy. Red Velvet got a little springs in his step. Everything happens for a reason. And boy, it's been absolutely a terrific, terrific time for Kevin. It was unbelievable. Sacramento has been great for Kevin. You know, Kevin's the type of player that tries to have a good relationship with everyone he plays with, whether they're the 12th man or the, or the best player. So he's forged a lot of great relationships with the Kings, um, both on the court and off the court. But what that has done for his career has been great. And I think he's hungry for more. Wonderful ball movement, the jumper short. Herter, well, the ball finds energy, and Kevin Herter has enough energy to light up this Sacramento night. And with two blocks, three deflections, and seven defensive rebounds, especially one late in the game. Come on! Come on! I love Kevin. That's my guy. Um, that's my guy. I mean, what's, what's there not to love about him? I think he's he's one of my good friends. Um, he's a guy I golf with a lot, so we have a lot of clashing going on there. So zoom in right here. Zoom in right here. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that bang. Oh, that's all this guy. All he does is this from. Kevin Herter. Um, I don't know. We we always pick on him. <laughs> we pick on him. Uh, he's he's our guy. We love him. But yeah, he's the one who always gets picked on. What's one word I would give Kev? I would say gravity, just his gravity of being on the court, even when Kev's not making shots, they guard him, regardless of how he's shooting. If he's shooting 50% from three or if he's shooting 20% from three, he still has a presence on the court when he's there. And we're just like, it's what, are we, finger pointing, what so. are we doing? <laughs> yes. Go please support. <laughs> yeah. I know what you can do. <laughs> yeah. Obviously this guy's a special guy, and a special, a special dude in, in our lives. You know, I've definitely gotten numb to the feeling of, of him playing against all these superstars and and playing on the big, big stage. But, you know, I think what's great about Kevin is that, you know, none of that has changed who he is as a person and especially as a friend. You know, I think the biggest thing that everybody locally in the community still believe is that Kevin's still Kevin. I thought that was you guys. <laughs> right around. Good to see you. How are you doing? Good. What time to see you? I know. How are you? Great to see you guys. How's everything going? When he got drafted, there was never so many Atlanta Hawks fans up here, but even now so, right, with Sacramento being far away, you know, people wearing purple, black, and, and white all the time, and, you know, wearing Sacramento Kings jerseys, and, you know, it's a testament to him, too, because, you know, I've been with him, and he'll stop, and he'll talk to somebody for 20 minutes. You know, we'll be working out in here. You see this beautiful facility, six courts, and there's people playing in here all the time, and they'll ask for a picture, and he always says yes, and so, you know, the community is naturally going to, you know, rally around somebody who's playing at the professional level, but even more so, like, he guides that. So it's, it's meant a lot, and, you know, it's helped other young players that we have realize, like, hey, Kev did it, like, I can do it too, and he's such a good person to follow his blueprint because he's done it the right way. What is one message that you would tell I love the young man you've become, uh, and I know you're going to continue developing. I will always be that guy who just wants to be there for you, and that's all I want is just to, to see you do your best.
keep being yourself, keep grinding, and you know everything else will take care of themselves. You know, it's a long journey. We still have a lot of accomplishments to come, but you know, taking a day at a time, you know, keep accomplishing those goals, and and we'll be we'll be set for for whatever you want to do. Just know that your family's proud of you at the end of the day, and we are very happy of who you've become and what you do, and the people that you reach, and just the message that you leave to people, and how big of a role model you are for everyone that you talk to. Kev, I hope you know that your boys were always going to support you no matter where you're at. We're always going to be your biggest fans no matter what, man. A message I would want to say to Kevin, uh, I'm proud of him because of who he is, not what he is. Um, it's not about what his paycheck is. It's not about what the people in the rest of the world see him as. He's true to himself. He's true to his family. So. I know he'll continue to work hard and I know he'll continue to do the right thing because he always has. <clears throat> I think one message that I would want to make sure that Kevin knows, and I, and I hope in my heart that he does, is how very proud he makes his family and his community and his friends and the grace that he has and how he carries himself. We would want Kevin to know that he's loved. We would want him to know how proud we are of Kevin. We would want Kevin to know how much he's missed and how we look forward to the next time that we see him, even as we're saying goodbye from a visit, that we're always looking forward to the next time.